Good afternoon everybody, my name is Marius and welcome back to the channel. In today's episode I'm going to be showing you how I built this positive air pressure system for the camper. For those of you that don't know what that is, it's basically a system that keeps all the dust outside of your trailer or camper while you're busy towing it. The reason for going with the fan is twofold. Firstly, I get to filter all the air coming into the cabin by sucking it through an engine air filter and secondly, I've got an idea for an attachment to attach to this assembly which will transform it into evaporative cooler. So not only do I get to keep the dust out while I'm busy towing, I also get cool air when I'm at my destination, which is a huge bonus to me. A quick look around at the 3D model of my design on SketchUp for the fan box assembly. Completely off topic, I thought of zooming in on the front hinge just so you can see what they look like on the model. Let me show you this quick demonstration of positive pressure in action. Imagine this box as your camper or trailer. I've added my best attempt of a drawing on it to help with your imagination. The baby powder will represent the dust. As I add some air pressure inside the box, air will now find and force its way out of the smallest openings. Whether it's a pinhole in your construction, a rubber seal with a small bit of debris on it breaking the seal, or in this case, a 5mm hole you drilled wrong and forgot to close. Now let me try and get some baby powder right in that 5mm hole we forgot about and see what happens. Because air was on its way out, there is no way that any baby powder could move past the air to get inside. See when I flip this box open, not a single speck of powder made it inside. Now you don't need a lot of pressure, you just need air flowing to the outside constantly through any openings that it may find. Let me get the pass ready that I will need for this fan box. The steel is so thin that you'll see I start with a bending tool but immediately feel that my fingers will do just fine. The box didn't need any structure, so to keep it lightweight, I used thin steel. My trusty old combination square. I use this square for everything. Here is some specs on the fan that I chose. I got the EC250 model. It's not the cheapest, but I think it'll work great. I know that while towing a trailer or camper, the inside becomes a low pressure zone. That's why dust not only finds its way inside, it actually gets forced inside due to the pressure difference. Now calculating that difference is way above my pay grade, so I'm not even going to try and do it. For me, this will be a test and measure, but I'm fairly confident that it'll do just fine. At full tilt, the power draw is a mere 150 watt in this fan, and trust me, it'll never see max power. It's powerful. Moving 30 cubic meters of air per minute is a lot. But the main reason for choosing this fan is that it can build a little pressure. Most fans do not build pressure at all, as air cavitates around the blade edges. This specific fan can build 510 pascals of pressure. And it's got an infinite range of variable speed. You can spin this fan exactly the RPM you wanted. I started the design of this box by first finding a suitable air filter. I wanted an automotive engine filter as I know they don't let any dust through and it will be easily replaceable at any spare shop. This one is from my Opel Astra J series. The divider you see me install in the box is to separate the suction side from the air outlet. Without this, the fan would circulate the air around itself for the most part. It's way easier drawing air back to the intake side than it would be to suck new air through the filter. By creating these two compartments, I now force every ounce of air being moved through the filter. Let me clear the air so long with regard to the design. You will soon notice that once I bolt the fan down and weld the box shut, I cannot access the fan again for any maintenance or repairs. Reason for this is that I'm lazy and I see it as version 1. Before I spend loads of time making tabs so that the panel is removable, I'm first gonna test this. If it works, then I'll leave it be until the day the fan gives me hassle. Then I'll cut the box apart and see how I can modify it, or at worst, just build a new one. It does feel weird knowing that right now a simple electrical connection would have me cut this box open with an angle grinder. The second part to the whole system as mentioned earlier is that I've got an idea to use the same fan and box as an evaporative cooler. When I'm planning to take this camper, there won't always be shore power and solar will never give enough power to run a proper air conditioning unit. Evaporative coolers only use as much electricity as the fan and if built right, they drop the air temp by more than enough. In this case, I wouldn't even need anything past 40 watts with the amount of air this thing moves at 25% power. I will get to explaining and building of the evaporative cooler at a later stage, as right now I don't have my final design yet. 
It's mostly an idea, but I will keep going at it until it works. Now I know some of you might wonder, why not just install the normal air scoops that you find on most campers and canopies that forces air in as you drive, creating some positive pressure. Now here comes a lot of ifs. When these scoops are placed in the right location, and they are properly designed so they keep water out when driving in the rain, and only see a fresh, clean stream of air, they work pretty good. Where I don't like them is when you're driving with a friend or a convoy, the cars in front of you kicks up a lot of dust, so now you no longer have clean air to create a positive pressure in your trailer. Same goes for windy days, when the air around you is dusty already, you now don't have access to clean air for the cabin. I've also seen convoys travelling at slow speeds, they still make a lot of dust, but at slow speeds you don't have the ram air effect for the scoops to work. With a fan and filter system, you're now always getting clean air for pressurising the inside, regardless of how fast the vehicle is going or the air quality on that day. I've seen some scoops with dust filters inside the intake that might help with the dust issue, but even if they do, I still won't have a strong built-in fan to cool my camper down on hot summer days. This design for me is a killing two birds with one stone solution. I make it sound as if this thing was really tested and worked perfectly fine. I always use lacquer thinners to clear the steel before applying any primer to it. Always make sure you get all the nooks and crannies clean as nothing sticks to a dirty surface. When I need to wipe off the primer or paint between coats, I would usually use benzene as it takes any skin oil or fingerprints off but doesn't attack the paint. I then first apply a self etching primer to the steel before using body filler with hardener to seal the compartments up. I don't weld the seams full as the heat distortion would screw up my whole box and with welding being as strong as it is, it's just plain unnecessary to do full welds. Even car bodies are mostly spot welded together. I'm using Fusion Filler 2 pack body filler for the insides. The ratio of hardener is always tricky as I don't use this often and most professionals know just by looking at the amount they've scooped out onto the mixing platform how much hardener to add. It's difficult as you can't measure exactly how much of each paste you've got to mix. Because it won't be visible, I didn't even try and get it smooth and even. I just used my finger to smear the corners and get them sealed up. I cover the inside of the box with a dark grey spray paint, just so that when you peek through the louvers, your eyes won't see the light filler or primer. The reason for painting the inside of the box is taking precaution for when my evaporative cooler is working, the air that it will be pulling through will be more moist and I don't want the inside of the box to start rusting due to it. These laser cut parts will form our hinges for the box. They are designed that when in the closed position, the box will have exactly the right amount of squeeze and pressure on the filter rubber in order to seal it up evenly against the trailer body. I had to be real careful here, welding such small parts to the box and not to each other, that would be a proper fail. This is the last time I can access the fan. As soon as these louvers are welded into place, then my access is gone. I'm only spot welding them on the front tips so that I can still remove them if I have to. The angles might not be right as I've just eyeballed them into place. The clamps I used for lifting into place is just for balance and keeping it still later on for when I try and weld the second part of the hinge to the trailer. The spirit levels between the box and the trailer were just used as spaces so that the gap would be even from top to bottom. Opening and closing the change filters seems to be working smooth and easy. Instead of trying to measure where to cut the hole, I use a bit of wet paint. By putting some on the corner on the filter, it'll show me exactly where the filter makes contact with the trailer. Doing it this way is 100% foolproof and always spot on. Instead of paint, you can also use anything to leave a mark when pressed against the other surface. I then mark the thickness of the spirit level, roughly 20mm smaller, to allow enough steel for the filter to seal against. No going back after I make this cut, it's final. This is where the intake will be no matter what. 
using some sandpaper on the edges just to make sure there's no sharp pieces to poke or stab me later on. Here we have our first problem. Initially, I thought that this intake cover with its bottom open would allow enough air to be sucked in. That little slot does not deliver nearly enough air for the fan. It cripples it completely. I'm going to design a cover with louvers that will still expel water but allow a lot more air to the intake. Looking back at this, I don't know what I was thinking trying to supply this monster fan with such a small intake. As always, thank you so much for watching till the end. Please like and share the video with your friends and family and please remember to subscribe to the channel, it helps me out a lot. On the next video, I'm going to be working on the pop-up roof, getting all the mechanisms in place to lift and lower it with gas shocks and so on. So stay tuned for that and then I'll see you guys on the next one. Thank you and cheers.